I'm Tim Wagner. I'm Agriculture Outreach Coordinator for the Isaac Walton League, and I work principally in Iowa and Illinois on a range of ag and water quality issues. And we decided to come out and pay a visit today to Bruce Carney, farmer here in Maxwell, Iowa. Uh, Bruce was uh, gracious enough to speak at our national convention back in, De in July here in Des Moines uh, and just wooed the audience on his story about how he came into the regenerative agriculture soil health business uh, from conventional farming. His uh, operation fits so well with uh, kind of the overarching theme of the Isaac Walton League's agricultural policy and our, uh, the things that we try to promote with regenerative agriculture and building soil health, i.e. cover crops, uh, no-till, livestock integration in an operation, building the soil health and organic matter, addressing water quality, uh, producing healthier food for healthier people, that, those kind of things. And Bruce has done a, just done a great job and, and uh, he's got a really good story to tell and uh, that's, well, that's why we're here today. Bruce Carney with Carney Family Farms. Uh, what we do here, what we are, is, is basically a multi-generation uh, farming operation uh, with, with now four generations involved. So my mom, my generation, my kids, and, and got seven grandkids. What we're starting with here is a degraded resource. And I'm talking about soil, environment, water quality, uh, multiple things across the spectrum of, of the environment. What we try to do is, is look at regenerating our soils with the practices that we do. Basically, we're, a, we're a, a, a protein operation. We raise beef, pork, sheep, poultry, and, and all those are as natural as we can out on grass. Obviously, we feed pigs corn. They're, they're not a ruminant animal that, that can live on forage. We try to do everything as natural as we possibly can. Stay away from GMOs and, and chemicals and, and uh, pesticides and that sort of stuff. We get into the, the soil health a little bit. Just uh, adaptive grazing, the way we graze our animals. Just putting the, the animals in the right place at the right time for, for a specific objective outcome of it. Uh, it could be you have uh, weeds somewhere, so you, you tighten those animals up really tight on that area and, and uh, manipulate that weed population with uh, animal impact, tromping the weeds down, getting other forages started things like that. So, or maybe it's a wildlife issue. Maybe you want to keep them out of a certain area because you have nesting going on, bird, uh, uh, bird nesting and, and such like that. So uh, there's, there's multiple ways that you can look at adaptive grazing, but basically it's putting the animals in the right place at the right time. In soil health, the biggest thing I think that we, we look at here is organic matter. Our organic matter in, in most of our land today is one, two percent. If you just raise your organic matter one percent, that holds like 27,000 gallons of water. Um, so look, what, what could that do if we raise organic matter by one percent across every acre with the flood control that we need? All the flooding that's going on today could just be held in the land where it fell as opposed to running off and, and uh, draining it as quickly as we can. Nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, all those things. With 1% organic matter, you get 20 to 30 pounds of nitrogen. With 1% organic matter, you get four and a half to 6% of phosphorus, or 10 to 40% or 10 to 40 pounds of potassium, and two to three pounds of sulfur per acre over the course of a year. It will release that naturally, which goes back to the cut down on fertilizer, cut down on chemicals, do all those things with soil health. You can, uh, there, there's, there's multiple benefits to eliminating some of these things. And, and tillage is a big piece. Uh, I mean, tillage, uh, basically it, it destroys your soil structure. Uh, it, it burns up your organic matter. So if we can just go to a no-till system or, or a minimum till system, something less than what we do today, can all, can all attribute to that. Uh, soil health and, and, and organic matter, add diversity to your, uh, to your system. So if we could just go to, as opposed to the corn and bean rotation that most of the crop is in, uh, a three to a four crop rotation. So throw oats and hay and you know some small grains or something back into that. Perennial pastures, 
which is what we do. We don't do any row crop on the farm. I try to, anytime I intercede, I, I, I try to do warm season grasses, cool season stuff, uh, not just grasses, legumes, brasticas, broadleaves, uh, multiple uh, uh, species of everything. You get the diversity of the root system. Some of them have a taproot that goes down. They're, they're all going to bring up different nutrients from the soil. Uh, at different depth, from, from different depths, from different profiles in the soil. They're going to bring up different soils and, and weeds. Everybody's, you know, we can't have any weeds in our corn and beans. And, and to me, it's not a weed on my farm unless it's there for a whole year and a cow has made it. Then, then maybe it's a weed to me. Diversity is big. And I think diversity you'll find, they talk about, you can, you can talk about a diversity in animals. Animals, animals all eat different things. Uh, so, so multi-species grazing is another aspect of, of soil health. You can, you know, your sheep are going to eat more, a, a little bit more browse than a cow is. A cow's going to graze. You can go to goats, and they're going to they're going to do a, like all browse if they can, you know, off of uh, brush and and weeds and that type of stuff. So, you can throw all different kinds of animals out there and get different impacts on the land as well. Reduction in chemicals, we, we've talked about a couple of reasons why, and, and the, the organic matter can help relieve the uh, fertilizer and chemical. I think that's another aspect of uh, soil health is to try and eliminate, uh, reduce, at least reduce, and then maybe eliminate some of the chemicals and, and uh, pesticides and things that we use out there. And, and I think it's proven that you can after you do it for uh, you know, a, a long enough period that, that you could, uh, we can reduce some of that stuff. Rotations break pest cycles. Fertilizers, you could throw in organic fertilizers, use, use animal manures in, uh, from, from confinements or, or just put your animals out on the land for your fertilizer as opposed to, but you, but you have to have animals on the land to do that and we don't seem to want to be diversified on a farm at all. We're going to specialize now and, and only grow monocultures in one crop so but I'm not sure everybody understands what walked off the farm when animals walked off the farm uh, it, it's a it's a huge resource that we've replaced with uh, commercial fertilizers uh, that, that don't work I know when I put uh, animal manure out here I, I can tell the difference in that field for years you know I've, I've had when I first come out here, seeded alfalfa fields down behind spreading uh, beef manure on on the field, and it and an alfalfa crop lasted like six, seven years as opposed to three or four that they normally do. Mm -hmm. So I, I think there's a, a, it's huge. Organic fertilizers are huge. Cover crops another big one that we recycle. Uh, it, 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 they, they just recycle nutrients, pick up nutrients as opposed to letting them run off in the water. And, and, and flood off into soil. You're, you're picking those up. You're holding the soil in place with cover crops. Multiple benefits to, to, uh, to cover crops, uh, it, along with building the organic matter that we talked about, recycling those nutrients that, that you're going to uh, pick them up and then plants. They're going to die. They're going to recycle back, come back for the next year's crop. Hold the soil in place. M multiple benefits there. And, and I guess then the, maybe the fifth practice of, of soil health is just the animals, uh, putting, putting animals back on the land uh, to recycle. You put them out there on a, on a crop residue situation and they can take a lot of that uh, crop residue that you have year after year and turn that into usable fertilizer for your, free, for your next cash crop a lot faster than if it just lays there and, and recycles and turns itself. Cattle in a no-till situation I think is really good for the uh, uh, breaking up the compa uh, not compaction but capping on the ground. This, this ground a lot of times will just get a seal off on the top and water will run off as opposed to soak in and I think the hooves of them animals can help break that up, get infiltration going down through the soil. The manure, the urine, the, the saliva they put out there all the, the bacteria and the organisms in the soil are the same bacteria and organisms that are in the rumen of the cow. So all that stuff is just putting that, that biology back in the ground that chemicals, fertilizers, all those things are, are, are destroying, are, not, are, are killing that, that are in the soil that they're using out there. So I think that just helps regenerate your soil, put that back in. There's multiple aspects of uh, 
just just the livestock being out there. Uh, I know a, a lot of people are, a lot of farmers are really concerned about compaction uh, with livestock, and and we've done a four-year cover crop uh, grazing cover crops on a field, and and compared it to a field that we didn't have any grazing, just uh, no grazing and no cover crops on, and. Uh, we had less compaction on the field with the cows and the grazing than we did with the no cover crops and no grazing. And I think that has to do with the, you, you think, you know, why? Because all the roots from that cover crop in the ground, you get you get a huge root mass there for from a rye cover crop or a mixed cover crop, right? That's supporting that animal as opposed to nothing out there but just soil and wet soil and, and you get you get more compaction that way. So another aspect there maybe that I didn't talk about a little bit was uh, just, just the soil, uh, leaving residue on top of the soil to uh, cover the soil, uh, keep, keep the soil cooler, protect the soil from the sun, uh, otherwise it can heat up to quite high temperatures and kill all the microbiology in the soil. Uh, it, uh, it also holds the soil in place. If you have all that residue on top of the ground, it uh, uh, relieves the impact of the rain when it hits the soil. It, it hits the, the residue on top of the ground as opposed to the soil and, and starts erosion and moving soil around. So there's a, there's a lot of aspects to the, uh, the impact. Plus, to, to just to feed the biology in the soil. Uh, it, it will recycle that way. The worms are gonna come up and eat and pull stuff down and, and, and get all recycled. So I think it's, it's uh, important to leave that armor on the soil, uh, soil as well.